Friends, setting goals and planning your year can't be done with blinders on. If you want to make sure you set goals that make sense and will get you to your dream life, you absolutely need to spend time reflecting on what worked and what didn't in the past year and build on all your newfound wisdom. Do you want to know my secret to how to set business goals at the start of every new year? I take three whole days to myself and do nothing but think journal, and reflect on the previous 12 months with very specific questions in mind, which I'm about to share with you. But first, let me reiterate what I just said. I take three whole days to do nothing but think, journal, and reflect. No working, no planning, no strategizing, no networking, no meetings, no problem solving, no creating. I give myself lots of space to let my mind wander and all the feels from the past year bubble up. Building a business isn't just about the hours spent working, creating, problem solving, and schmoozing. Friends, entrepreneurship is a powerful vehicle for personal growth, self-acceptance, and healing. Because who, baby, do our buttons get pushed as we travel this journey? Welcome to the Work Less, Play More podcast for busy entrepreneurs who are ready to ditch the hustle, stop burning out on busy work, and get back to having a life. My name is Lindsay Johnson, aka The Radical Connector, and I've spent the last 10 years teaching first-time entrepreneurs how to get customers and make money. Listen in as I chat with other hustle recovering business owners as we share our top tips for, you guessed it, working less and playing more. Let's do this. Hello, friends. Welcome to this week's podcast. And for those counting, this is podcast 20. Holy smokes. I can't believe we already have 20 podcasts up and posted for you. Now, this is going to be the last podcast of the year. And then I am taking a well-deserved break over December to chill, to eat some Christmas baking, to hang out with friends and family in a socially distanced and safe way. And oh boy, I am going to rest. It has been a doozy of a year and a half, almost two years. And while I always recommend that entrepreneurs take an extended time off over the holidays, especially if you your business is slow this time of year. I feel like this year we really need to take an extended break. Now, if you're a part of the Rad Connectors community, and if you're not, why aren't you? Come and join us. We're on Facebook. Just search for Rad Connectors. We're going to be focusing on what it means to take a real break in December and really reflect on the year before you dive into goal setting. If the pandemic hasn't proved one thing over the past couple of years, it's that time isn't real and plans are arbitrary. I want you to remember that this year as you're wrapping up and starting to think about what you want your 2022 to look like. The tendency is to take December and set all your goals for next year, make your vision board, really pump yourself up to have a big year in the next year. And you know, here we're about not burning out. We're about anti-hustle culture. We're about working less and playing more. And I am here to remind you that y'all, you have been through a heck of a couple of years, especially if you've had to pivot your business or make big evolutions in your business and how you make your money and how you get customers. And so I'm officially giving you permission to take December off. Now, for some of you, I get that it might be your busy season for the first couple of weeks. So rock it. And then my goodness, take off the time. If you're like me and a lot of your customers are off doing other things and they're not as focused on work right now, then absolutely take some time off. I call the sleep when the baby sleeps philosophy or the sleep when your business sleeps. If you've been around babies, you know, especially for new parents, when your baby is sleeping, you go get some sleep. It's the same in entrepreneurship. If your business is slow right now, oof, take the time off, rest, sleep, relax, reflect, do anything but work. And this year, I'm going to suggest you do anything but strategize. I want you to take December to really reflect on the growth and the changes and the evolutions you've been through in the last couple of years, or for those that are new just in the last year. And I want you to really think about what are the things that felt good? What are the things that lit you up? What are the things that just sucked your soul that you do not want to take into next year versus the things that you can't wait to take into next year? And what I absolutely don't want you doing is setting a strategy or a plan for 2022 or setting goals when you are feeling stressed, pressured, burnt out, exhausted, frustrated, or like you've lost any sense of passion. And that can happen this time of year because the pressure is hard to hustle this time of year. And for a lot of us, it is a busy season right now and we are burning out. So the rule for this year, the December 2021 rule for this year is do not set goals until you are adequately refreshed, 
and renewed and refocused. Now you probably know that I do a free workshop every single month for the entrepreneurs in the Rad Connectors community. And December 8th's workshop is going to be all about reflecting on what took place this year and what we've learned as business owners, the patterns we've seen, what's worked in terms of our marketing or our sales processes, and what just made us feel stinking good as entrepreneurs. And then of course, getting real about the things maybe we've been forcing ourselves to do that we don't want to do anymore that we can just go ahead and let drop. So we'll be diving into a whole big 2021 debrief on December 8th for our free Rad Connectors workshop. You can get all the info on the show notes or just go to my website, theradicalconnector.com. It's all there in my free goodies section. And then starting in January, that is when we will officially be setting goals because why? Time isn't real. Plans are arbitrary. We don't need to stick to some calendar because we say it's the new year and we should have all our goals set. Blah, forget it. Hogwash. If that doesn't work for you, if you're feeling a little burnt out, a little exhausted, take the time. You can start fresh in January when you're mentally fresh and energetically fresh as well. Also, when you have a lot of downtime, oh, it's so great for just like playing online, going and looking at other things that are happening, trends that are going on, you know, the things that you maybe can't get to when you're really busy during the year. Take that time to let yourself be inspired. Take the time to let yourself dream and then come meet me in January and then let's set some goals for the year. As for now, as for our final podcast, our 20th podcast of 2021 and the last one before myself and Min, our podcast manager takes a break. I have 15 questions for you right now that I would love for you to reflect on over December to really help you set business goals that inspire and delight you next year in 2022. All right, are you ready? Let's do this thing. Friends, setting goals and planning your year can't be done with blinders on. If you want to make sure you set goals that make sense and will get you to your dream life, you absolutely need to spend time reflecting on what worked and what didn't in the past year and build on all your newfound wisdom. Do you want to know my secret to how to set business goals at the start of every new year? I take three whole days to myself and do nothing but think journal and reflect on the previous 12 months with very specific questions in mind, which I'm about to share with you. But first, let me reiterate what I just said. I take three whole days to do nothing but think, journal, and reflect. No working, no planning, no strategizing, no networking, no meetings, no problem solving, no creating. I give myself lots of space to let my mind wander and all the feels from the past year bubble up. Building a business isn't just about the hours spent working, creating, problem solving, and schmoozing. Friends, entrepreneurship is a powerful vehicle for personal growth, self-acceptance, and healing because who, baby, do our buttons get pushed as we travel this journey? Now, before we dive in, the best way to use this list of 15 questions is to number one, schedule a few days in your calendar just for thinking. Number two, Grab your notebook and dive into these 15 questions to help you connect deeply to yourself, your business, and the business goals that inspire and delight the heck out of you. And number three, remember, no problem solving or creating. You are just reflecting. And I know, I know many of you out there are going to want to go into some sort of strategy or figure out the how to make it happen and start planning it out. Nope. You were just reflecting over these three days. All right, let's dive in with question number one. What worked to move my business forward. Thinking about those RGAs, those revenue generating activities that resulted in new customers, opened the doors to new opportunities to expand your audience, clientele, and reputation, or leveled up your mindset and confidence. Who did you hire this year to support you in moving forward? What mindset shifts had the biggest impact on clearing internal blocks to growth? Did you trip across a product or service that was a customer favorite and helped your business soar? Did you niche down even more on your market, messaging or offerings that helped you reach more people faster and make more money. Maybe you joined a mastermind or created your own and with the right people in your corner, you were able to stay focused and level up in new ways this year. Make a list of all the things that helped you move your business forward this year and do a happy dance while holding these things with gratitude and joy. I'm sure you figured this out already. These are the things you're going to want to do more of next year. Number two, what turned out to be busy work that had you spinning your wheels, but not actually producing results. This is where we need to get really, really, with ourselves and take a look at all the busy work we did that didn't actually move our business forward and instead soaked up all your time and creativity only to leave you in more or less the same spot you were at the beginning of the year. For example, did you spend a lot of time posting on social media and growing your audience, but no actual business revenue was generated from all that work? Or maybe you did a lot of public speaking on your own social media feeds or to other people's audiences, 
but your email list didn't grow very much and it didn't result in money in your bank account. Remember, being busy is not the same as growing your business. Reflect on all the work that you did that ended up being busy work because it didn't produce results. And remember, if you think there's room for improvement in reducing your busy work, I have a 15 minute busy work challenge, which I will put in the show notes that helps you break down exactly what you do all week in your business and get real about what is bringing in results and what isn't. All right. Number three, what directly brought in new customers and revenue? This is the most important aspect of building your business that you need to be paying attention to if you want to learn how to set business goals that inspire and delight you. You need to know what activities you did that directly brought in new customers and put money in your bank account. It may surprise you to know that in the first few years in business, oftentimes it can feel like we're getting lucky or fluking out when we get new customers. Thank you, imposter syndrome. But that is so not the case. The truth is you did something that works. Do you know what you did that worked? Reflect on your new customers and revenue streams over the past year. How did they find you? What made them give you their money? What did you do right that brought them into your world? And by the way, if imposter syndrome has you doubting your brilliance, has you thinking it was a fluke and not something you did right, I've got a blog for you called Five Daily Secrets You Can Use to Stop Imposter Syndrome in Its Tracks. I'm going to put that in the show notes for you so you can click on that and have a read as well. Because imposter syndrome will make you think that you fluked out or it was given to you or it was an accident. And the truth is you are doing something right, whether it's the content you're creating, the people you're networking with, the general RGAs in your day to day, you are doing something right right? It's really important that you know what that is. And if imposter syndrome is lying to you, screw that. (laughs) Come read the blog so that you can start to undo that internal self-doubt and get back to being a badass. Now, number four, what didn't bring in new customers like you thought it would? Hey, repeat after me, failure isn't real. If you tried something new this year and it didn't work out the way you thought it would, congratulations, you took a leap. You hopped out of your comfort zone and tested an idea. You learned a ton and can now tweak, pivot, or ditch whatever didn't work. Finding out that something didn't work is not failure, really. So stop beating yourself up, put on your scientist hat, and look back at your past 12 months as an experiment. You need to know what didn't work, and more importantly, why it didn't work. Then take those lessons into the next 12 months. I want you to release judgment and not internalize failure as a reflection on your capabilities. Making mistakes or discovering that something doesn't work is part of the process, and I want you to embrace it. All right, number five, what did you love doing that was effective and want to continue? This one is simple. What lit you up? What brought you joy and made you do a happy dance every dang day? And it worked. Yeah, do more of that. Number six, what did I hate doing that I will either stop or tweak so I enjoy it? What brought you down? burned you out, sucked up your will to live that you never, ever want to think about again. Is it necessary for your business to grow? If yes, can you outsource or automate it? Can you do it in a different way so you actually enjoy it? If no, can you stop doing it all together? For example, I often hear entrepreneurs telling me they don't like having to show up consistently and frequently on social media. Okay, can you outsource it? Can you automate it? Can you find a way to do it that is fun, authentic, and feels good? Or can you stop doing it all together? Spend some time reflecting on what brought you down and how you can do things differently or not at all next year. All right, seven, what do I need to start doing in order to move my business forward? Based on all of your answers so far, you're probably getting a clear picture of what's working and what's not and where you need to ditch the busy work and make room for more RGAs, revenue generating activities. What does your gut tell you is something you need to start next year to move your business forward? Is there anything you've been wanting to start, but I've been putting off for any reason? Like maybe you think you're not ready, or maybe you're afraid to do it. What do you need to implement next year to move your business forward? Be bold, be brave, and strategic. What do you want to start next year? Number eight, what one thing do you want to focus on for the next 12 months and put all your time, attention, and money on? Wait, only one thing? You betcha, friends. It takes an average of two years to take something from idea to functioning and producing results. You will grow faster by putting your all behind one big idea or goal than by splitting your precious time, energy, and moolah on multiple big ideas at once. We have a saying over here in our Rad Connectors community, It's not that you can't do everything, it's that you can't do everything at once. I know you have a bunch of super cool ideas, but you need to pick one to focus on for the next 12 months and give it all you've got. So what is your one thing for next year? Number nine, 
where did I directly connect with my PPC, my perfect potential customer that I can lean into next year? And if you're new around here, your perfect potential customer is another way of saying your ideal client, your target market, your ideal customer avatar, the people that you want to work with, the people that you want to buy from you. Where have you had the most rewarding and engaging connections with your PPC? Facebook groups, Instagram DMs, LinkedIn groups, YouTube, TikTok, networking organizations, online or live events and communities. <laughs> you definitely want to know where to spend more time and where to stop spending time next year in order to connect with your PPC and generate more sales. By the way, if you are spending a lot of time on social media, but not getting new customers, you're going to want to come download my guide, how not to sell to strangers, five steps to turning social media strangers into customers without selling. Again, I'll put that in the show notes, head over to worklessplaymorepodcast.com or my website, the radical connect com and you will find it there. Number 10, where did I not connect with my PPC and need to stop hanging out next year? Speaking of where to stop spending time, where do you need to stop networking, posting, engaging, etc., in the hopes that you'll pick up new clients or generate revenue? More so, is there anywhere you're spending your time that you're not enjoying? Whether live or online, your time and energy are a precious resource and you don't have to spend them where it's not productive or enjoyable for you. So where are you going to stop spending time next year? Number 11, what did I invest in that got results? Should I do it again next year? Where did you spend your money on support services or software that paid off? Was it coaching, social media management, video editing, podcast producing, courses, software like Calendly, Canva, Zapier, QuickBooks, website hosting, memberships and dues, virtual assistants? Listen, it costs money to build a business and probably more than you realized. Am I right? What were the investments you made in your business and yourself that paid off for you this year? Will you reinvest again next year? Make a decision on what you're going to invest in again for next year. Number 12, what did I invest in that didn't get results? How will I avoid that mistake again in the future? Remember my point about failure and why we need to stop beating ourselves up when we make mistakes and instead view it as an important lesson along entrepreneurial journeys. That applies here too. Sometimes we invest in things that don't work for us the way we think they will. We hire someone without properly vetting them and they ghost us or under deliver. We rush to sign up for a course because of an expiring offer and realize we're not ready for it. It's not a good fit or it's just not what we needed. We buy software that's not adequate, way more than we need, or just doesn't work the way we thought it would. Real talk. Every single entrepreneur does all of these a few times over. Cut yourself some slack. You're juggling a lot up in that brilliant brain of yours, and sometimes you don't make the best decisions under pressure or because you're new in the game and haven't learned the right questions to ask before shelling out your hard-earned money yet. Now, I'm not saying these lessons don't hurt and don't cost us, but they are not the end of the world. They are part of the process. The important thing is to reflect on your bad investments from this year and think about what went sideways and how you'll avoid similar situations in the future. Number 13, have I clarified my niche and revenue streams? I touched on this earlier, and I want us to dig a little bit deeper now with this question. Have you clarified your niche, marketing, offerings, and revenue streams this year? Were there any runaway hits in your products, services, or content? Is there anything that was a snooze fest for your audience or customers that you can stop offering, saying, or doing next year? Have you discovered a clear and more relatable way to talk about what you do, the problem you solve, and the solution you offer? Have you nailed your sales process and uncovered a way to get new customers quickly and easily? Recognizing the clarity you got this year will help you with your one thing next year as well. This clarity goes a long way in how to set business goals for next year. So shine some light on where you got super clear this year. Number 14, do I need to change my messaging, offerings, or activities? Now that you've gotten some clarity with question 13, what do you need to change or create? Copy on your website, offerings, your content strategy, your lead magnets or email marketing, your automations or service providers, your RGAs, your revenue generating activities, social media accounts, marketing strategy, sales process, branding. Brand evolution and changes are common in the first few years. I want you to take some time and reflect on what currently exists and where you might need to make some changes to better serve your market or communicate your message. Remember, now is not the time to take action. Don't get distracted. Right now, you're just thinking and journaling. Planning comes later. 15, how do I want to feel in my business and my life next year? 
Oh, did you think this list was only about technical aspects of your business? Heck no. The most important important aspect of a profitable business is to make sure it's sustainable for you. I want you to love what you do. If you're not getting up every morning thrilled to dive into your business, there might be something wrong. Are you burning out? Is something not aligned with who you are and what you want or need? Are you doing work that drains you? Are you working with people who drain you? Are you struggling to do it all alone without support or business BFFs? Is your imposter syndrome keeping you stuck, small, and holding you back? Are you pushing yourself too hard and setting unrealistic expectations? Are money, stress, and worry getting you down? Okay, listen, we say this all the time around here. If you don't think about giving up at least twice a year, are you even an entrepreneur? (laughs) We've all been there. Everyone has bad days, disappointments, and unpleasant surprises. Ideally, those days are few and far between. What we're going for here is way more joyful days than rainy ones. Reflect on how you want to feel in your business next year. What do you need to stop, start, or continue to make this happen? Remember, friends, you cannot set goals and make plans for your business next year without first taking some time to reflect on what worked, what didn't, and what needs to change. Carve out some time in your calendar to just reflect, think, and journal using these 15 questions as a guide. And don't take action or start fixing things yet. This is just time for reflecting and thinking. I've got a blog article with these questions posted in the show notes, where you'll also find links to the Rad Connectors group on Facebook, the Busy Work Challenge, and the How to Sell Without Selling Guide. And of course, if you want to learn more about joining Irresistible Entrepreneurs Academy, my coaching and co-working community, that'll be in the show notes as well. And you can find everything on the radicalconnector.com. Friends, it has been an absolute delight to hang out with you this year and to bring you all the brilliance of the entrepreneurs that we featured in our first 20 episodes of the Work Less, Play More podcast. I've already started lining up some great guests for next year. And of course, we're going to be diving more into how we can ditch the hustle, ditch the burnout, work less by being more productive and effective with our time so that we can close those laptops and go have a life. If you're kicking around on December 8th, come and hang out with us for our annual debrief in the Rad Connectors community and take a nice long break this holiday season. You deserve it. You are worth it. And I want you to prove to yourself that you truly can work less and play more. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to do my own thinking, reflecting, and journaling, and I can't wait to share it with all of you next year. Bye for now. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to learn more about joining my community for new entrepreneurs who want to ditch the busy work and discover how to work less and play more all the way to six figures and beyond, please visit theradicalconnector.com. Check out today's show notes for all the juicy resources we covered. If you love what you've heard, subscribe and leave a review. Happy connecting. I will see you online.